Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'm making another resin bowl with U-Timber inserts. It's an idea I got from the last resin bowl I did on the channel. You can click the link above to see that one. I began by cutting the U into manageable chunks, then I moved on to cleaning the wax off the U blank. I needed to remove all the wax so the resin would bond to it. Fairly easy with a disc sander, but it made a mess of the sanding pad. With the U blank placed in the bucket, I arranged timber offcuts around it to save resin. On top of the blank, I placed the five U offcuts and placed a scrap piece of wood and a few offcuts in the center again to try and save resin. The idea was that the offcuts would be turned off the finished piece, but as you'll see later on, some of them became part of the design. Having learned from the last time, I made sure it was warmer for this pour and I kept the resin indoors so it was at a nice warm temperature. This resin is mixed two to one and I mixed a combined 450 milliliters in each batch. With both parts added to the pot, I mixed it thoroughly for about two minutes. Then I added the coloring. This time I used an alcohol dye as well as the green mica powder. The alcohol dye I used was a fluorescent green and dark green. I mixed three batches for the first pour, a lot more than I had hoped I would use. I didn't want to put any more in because I was worried it would overheat and crack. I would have to do a second pour the day after. third batch added, I placed some weight on top to stop the wood floating up in the resin and put it all in the pressure pot. As usual, I added about 50 to 55 psi to the pressure pot and left it overnight. Having mixed at least two litres of epoxy resin, I am now a bit of an expert. So when the instructions say, if mixing with a drill and paddle, use low speed around 350 to 450 RPM, I obviously know better. So I turn the drill up to maximum speed and yep, resin everywhere. Mainly over the bench and myself. A lesson to be learned if ever there was one. After a few frantic minutes of cleaning and cursing the resin for leaping out of the mixing cup, I mixed two more batches, coloured the same as the previous day's mix. These were then added to the rest and placed back in the pressure pot for 72 hours. Three days later and the resin has nicely cured and this time the colouring hasn't sunk to the bottom. As soon as the pot was pressurised I placed it in a warm room indoors and this definitely helped to cure it faster. I marked the centre on each end of the resin blank and drilled a 6mm hole for the woodworm screw and I mounted the whole thing in the lathe. Having 
got the blank firmly mounted and checked for balance, I began turning it down. The Easywood Tools Carbide Finisher was the weapon of choice for this one, and it worked great. It is however the mid-size, and I think I will have to invest in a larger version with a bigger cutter. On the one I am using, the smaller cutter has a tendency to dig in and stop the lathe. a quick go with the half inch bowl gouge but this kept catching i'm sure if i had persevered with it it would have been okay but the carbide cutter was doing a better job so i stuck with it using a negative rate scraper to remove the tool marks as i went along with my previous resin projects, the ribbons of resin fly off everywhere, including sticking to the camera lens. I clean them off as often as I can, but sometimes the view will be obscured, but not so much as last time. When I begin turning a project like this, I have a rough idea of how I want it to look. This was always going to be a pedestal bowl. I put the U-blank in the bottom just to form that part. In my mind, the top part would then gently curve upwards, narrowing at the top in sort of a goldfish bowl shape. But as with all the best laid plans, I adapted this shape to include a rim. This came about as I slowly uncovered the ends of the U-branches, and in the end, I think it turned out better than I had originally intended. This is the first time I've turned a piece of U, and even though most of it is encased in resin, the exposed part turned out very nice. In fact, at the time of editing this, I've ordered a number of U-blanks for future projects. I will do an episode to show what I make of them. Now you can see the outside of the bowl starting to take shape. One piece of the U still has resin covering it, so I gently removed material until all five of the branches were fully exposed. This is how the rim came into being. In the next clip, Played at normal speed, when I stop the lathe you can see how the offcuts have become part of the design of the bowl. Basically, when resin is curing it heats up and it convex. This convection carried the offcuts from their original position up into the higher parts of the casting. I was a bit annoyed with myself for not thinking this through, but in the end I think of them as Bob Ross would say, happy little accidents. the basic shape of the outside done, I decided to move on to cutting a mortise so I could turn the bowl round. The woodworm screw was still holding, but each time I stopped the lathe, I could feel a bit of movement, so I aired on the side of caution.
Through a bit of sanding, the bowl was remounted using the mortise and firmly held in place with the tailstock. I fared and blended the curves and added some more shape to the pedestal. Now I'd just like to say, if you've made it this far, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. I'm really enjoying making these videos and it'll be good to get some feedback, so please leave a comment. Also, a thumbs up will be welcome. And if you feel the need, the other button works as well. So thank you very much and back to the video. After the final shaping and sanding, I added the finish. As always, I cleaned the surface with denatured alcohol and applied a generous coat of sanding sealer. Then I denibbed the surface with a non-abrasive scotch pad. This was quickly followed with two applications of Yorkshire Grit Microfine Abrasive Paste, polished off with clean paper towel. Followed this with another new to me product, Novus Acrylic Scratch Remover and Plastic Polish Kit. I didn't see the need to use the heavy duty scratch remover, so I began with the fine paste and finished with a plastic clean and shine. This gave a much better finish than on my previous resin project and I'll definitely be using it again. Swiftly moving on to hollowing out the inside, once again the Easywood Tools carbide finisher did the majority of the work. I really did push this to the limit. At one point, the tool got so hot I had to let it cool down for a couple of minutes. I really do need to get that larger cutter. With ribbons of resin and yew flying everywhere, the hollowing out went fairly straightforward. I kept working down to the required depth, removing as much weight as I could, eventually getting to the point where I could remove the tailstock support. I snapped the remaining piece out of the centre and continued shaping the base and sides with the carbide cutter. removed the remaining tool marks with a negative rate scraper and sanded. For this I went from 80 to 2000 grit, followed with a good wipe down with denatured alcohol. Up next, sanding sealer, denibbed as before with a non-abrasive pad. Two more goes with Yorkshire Grit Microfine Abrasive Paste, cleaned and polished off, then followed up with the Novus Fine Paste, again polished off until a nice shiny finish is achieved. And finally, a good polishing inside and out with a Novus Plastic Clean and Shine. And that's another project finished. This turned out much better than I had hoped. It's only my second attempt at a resin bowl and putting aside the resin mishap, there will be many more to come. If you haven't already, please subscribe. 
leave a comment and a thumbs up will be much appreciated. This will all help the channel grow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now. Thank you.